Hello, my name's Jim Friend, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you four ways to make 3D animated typography. So we start here in After Effects, then we come up to File, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File, that'll ask you to save. That'll launch Cinema 4D Lite. First up, let's look at making the donut. I'm gonna come up to our primitives, Click and hold, select the torus to bring that into our scene. Then come down to our material manager at the bottom left hand side of the screen. Double click to make a new material. Double click again to open the editor. I'm going to turn off color. I'm going to turn off reflectance and I'm going to click on luminance. So I've made a very simple texture here that I'm going to load in. Just this with an alpha channel. It's pretty big, I think it's about 7,000 pixels by 7,000 pixels. This means if we get close with our camera, it won't distort. So let's load that into our luminance. Go to texture, load image, find that image, double click. We can save it within the project. Then we can quit that material manager and simply grab our texture down here and throw it onto our torus. To animate this, all we need to do is change the offset in the V, and you can see we have some animation. Let's make sure our timeline's at zero. Take our offset in the V to zero, click to add a keyframe, take the playhead all the way to the end, put 100 in the V offset, click to create another keyframe there, and we can play that back and see some animation. So at the moment, we're looking at this as a low quality version of the final result. To see the final result, go up to this clapperboard with the play icon, click once. Now there's two things we need to change to make this look a little nicer. Firstly, there's a bit of anti-aliasing around the text. And secondly, the geometry isn't very smooth, so it feels a bit janky around the edges. So let's fix that. Close this picture viewer, go into our render settings. So that's the clapperboard with the cog, click once. We can change dimensions here, 1920 by 1080. Then we can go to anti-aliasing and change this to best. This threshold also affects the quality, so the lower you go, the better the quality. So if you're still having issues, you can change that. Next, let's add some segments to smooth out our geometry. Clicking our torus in the objects tab and adding some pipe segments there, about 40. Let's render out another version. And as you can see, quite a difference between that and the old one. Always remember to save to see updates in After Effects. We can jump back to After Effects. That's created a Cinema 4D file. Throw that within a composition. We can play that back in this draft view. Or if we want to see the final result, we can go up to Renderer change this to current and that's your final result. Okay, so on to the next, the square donut. Let's go up to our objects, add a cube, holding down the one, two or three keys and clicking with the mouse to reposition the camera. I'm gonna put 500 centimeters in the X and I'm gonna put 100 segments in each. I'm gonna add our favorite bend deformer I'm going to make that a child of the cube. I'm going to put minus 90 in the bank rotation. I'm going to go back to the bender former under objects, fit to parent. I'm going to put the strength up to 360. So we get a perfect circle. Then I'm going to go up to our object and unchild the bender former. So just drag anywhere else. I'm going to grab both and I'm going to do Alt G to group them. I'm going to turn off our garage shading lines so we can see this a bit clearer. I'm going to add our material down here, dropping it onto our square donut. I'm going to make that type a little bit smaller, changing the tiles in U to 2 and tiles in V to 2. For this animation, we're going to go to our cube and go to our coordinates and change the pitch and we get this lovely oscillating square donut thing going on. You can 
reposition the camera as you like. Maybe something like this. Take the pitch to zero. Add a keyframe at zero. Go all the way up to our end. Put 360 in. Add a keyframe. And there's some weirdness. Remember, if you want to see that update in After Effects, make sure to hit save. Go over to After Effects and you should see that update. Okay, on to the next. Wobbly corn. So I'm going to go up to our objects. I'm going to add a tube. I'm going to change the orientation to minus Z. I'm going to put 500 in the height. I'm going to make the outer radius 200, the inner radius 190. I'm going to smooth out this geometry by adding some segments in the rotation 170. I'm going to add some more geometry in the height, make this 70. I'm going to reposition the camera by holding 2 on the keyboard and clicking with my mouse to zoom out, 1 to reposition. Next I'm going to go up to our deformers and I'm going to add a taper. I'm going to rotate that taper minus 90 in the pitch. I'm going to make it a child of the tube so you'll see this little down arrow if you click and drag the taper, drag it underneath the tube you'll get a down arrow, let go, that's now a child of the tube. Selecting the taper, we're going to go to Object and we're going to say Fit to Parent. That will fit the taper exactly round the geometry of our tube. We're going to adjust the strength and taper that down, something like this. I'm going to add the material. With that material selected up in the Objects, I am going to change the tiling to 3 and 3 just to shrink down that text a little bit. Next I'm going to go back up to our deformers. I'm going to add a wind deformer and make that a child of the tube as well. Making sure it's at the bottom of our hierarchy. I'm going to change the orientation of this wind. Minus 90 in the heading and 90 in the pitch. If we reposition our camera now you can see what's happening and we should get some animation here. If I go back to the start we're getting some wind wobble. So I'm going to change the start point of this wind. We can just grab this axis point right here and we can bring this right to the beginning of our tube. Play that back and we're getting this nice wavy motion. Let's change some settings in the wind. We're going to go to object, change the frequency to 3, and you can play around with the amplitude, how much it's waving, or the size of it. I'm going to leave mine around here. So that's our animation. Let's position the camera now. So we're looking down. Okay, so on to the next. The infinity loop. So let's create a cube. Let's go down to our properties and put a thousand in the X and a hundred in the Y and a hundred in the Z. Let's put a hundred in all the segments. We can get rid of this shading, so up to display, get rid of garage shading with lines. Let's add our bend deformer and go to our coordinates and put minus 90 in the bank. Next let's make that a child of our cube, just hovering until we see the down arrow, dropping it underneath. Going to our Objects tab of the Bend Deformer, hitting Fit to Parent and adding a strength of 360. Let's reposition our camera using the 1, 2 and 3 keys. 
Let's add a twist deformer. Add that as a child, making sure it's underneath the bend deformer, but not as a child. Like this, cube and child bend deformer, then the twist. Let's bring that bounding box across, holding E to get our move tools moving that up on the axis and holding down T and clicking and dragging to expand that bounding box. Let's select our twist from the objects tab and put an angle in something like 149. Let's go back up to our cube and under the coordinates put minus 90 in the bank that'll flip it up for us we can reposition the camera holding and clicking the one two and three keys let's position this to get a kind of infinity loop thing going something like this let's throw our material on top if you're coming from the last object we made let's double click through and disable the alpha there we can close that material editor now let's go up to our material on our cube click that let's add six in the tiles for U and minus one in the tiles for V reposition our camera slightly center this up we actually need to flip that from minus one to one and the animation for this is just going to be playing with the offset either in the V or probably better off in the U to get it wrapping round. So let's add a keyframe on offset at the beginning, go forward, add 50, add another keyframe there and play that back. Save that, see updates in After Effects. Well, I hope that was useful. If it was, please consider giving the channel a like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon for updates on new videos. And if you're just getting started with 3D, I've got a free course over on my website, link in the description below. And here are some other videos that I think you might like.